The name of Frank Sue is one that has been forgotten by English football over time, which is a crying shame. Sue was a trailblazer for diversity in the English game, being the first ever non-white player to turn out for the Three Lions. Whilst his name may have been forgotten, his impact is still plain to see. This is the story of the life of Frank Sue. Frank Sue was born in Buxton, Derbyshire, on the 8th of March 1914, to an English mother and Chinese father. He spent a great deal of his childhood in Liverpool, and joined his first club as a teenager, West Derby Boys Club. His abilities attracted potential suitors, with both Liverpool and Everton scouting him. He would begin his senior career with Cheshire League side Prescott Cables, a role he combined with his job as an office clerk. Soon after, he was signed by Stoke City for £400 in 1933. Later that year, he would make his debut and become the first player of Chinese descent to play in the Football League. Despite a 6-1 loss, Sue received praise for his performance and soon solidified his spot in Stoke's starting lineup as an inside left. He would become known as the Smiler due to how often he was seen smiling in photographs. However, due to competition in his position, which included the great Stanley Matthews, he would spend a lot of the next campaign with the reserves, and would also later break his leg. He would, however, recover, and re-established himself in the team, making 40 appearances at halfback as Stoke found their way to a fourth place finish. Sue continued to gain plaudits, with some asking for him to be selected for the England team. But all of a sudden, football came to a halt. The outbreak of World War II caused the Football League to be suspended, and like many, Sue's career was at risk. Sue worked for the Mitchell Entire Company to help the war effort, whilst also turning out in wartime matches. The war would not stop him turning out for England though. Between 1942 and 1945, he turned out nine times to the Three Lions in fixtures against other home nations teams. To date, he is the only player of Asian descent to play for England. However, because these were wartime games, they were not considered official caps. Sue would work for the RAF before the end of the war, alongside the likes of Stanley Matthews, Joe Mercer, Frank Swift, and Matt Busby. The war ended in 1945, but it had taken Sue's brother, Ronald. Sadly, Sue would fall out with Stoke manager Bob McGrory, mainly due to how often Sue was played out of position. Stoke accepted an offer from Leicester of £4,600, and Sue moved to Filbert Street. With his best years behind him, Sue struggled at Leicester, and moved to Luton Town. He spent two years at the Hatters, before finishing his playing career with Chelmsford. Sue's playing career had been solely based in England, but in his next step, he did a 180, and became a journeyman. He began his managerial career in Finland, before a brief spell with St Albans. He then managed Padova in Italy, before travelling to Sweden, and managing the Norwegian national team at the 1952 Olympics. He returned to Swedish side Eskil Stuna afterwards, where he became known as a disciplinarian, completely banning his players from consuming alcohol. He helped the club seal promotion to the second tier. He then took over at fellow Swedish side Orebro, and whilst being unpopular amongst players for his strict training regimes, he took the club to a second place finish in the Swedish second tier. He managed a number of other Swedish clubs, leading Odevold to promotion. A spell at Scunthorpe United followed, and whilst he achieved little there, Alf Ramsey commended Sue for how much he had improved the conditions of the club. Further spells in Scandinavia followed, but by the mid-1960s, he had developed a reputation as a short-term manager who was difficult to get on with, and so he never managed again. He would return to Stoke, where he managed the newsagents towards the end of his life. Frank Sue died on the 25th of January 1991 at the age of 76, due to complications from dementia. Whilst his name has been lost in time, many have campaigned for his recognition, with the Frank Sue Foundation set up to encourage people of Asian heritage to partake in football. Sue is spoken about fondly by those who knew him, described by many as friendly and also hugely ambitious. Sue's story is one of football's great what-ifs, 
Had the Second World War not broken out, he could well have had many more appearances for England and be remembered as the great. And had he been given the managerial opportunity at a club in England that matched his ambitions, he may well have become a legendary manager. <laughs>